Hi everyone, welcome back. And we are back at it with another hacker rank. And this time we have finally, I think, ended the linked list series. So this question is about uh, ice, this, it's called ice cream parlor. And I think we need to explain the preamble a little bit before I jump into the question. <clears throat> so uh, two friends like to pull their money, go to ice cream parlor. They always choose two distinct flavors. They spend all their money, given a price list, select two that will cost all the money that they have. So the condition that they've set is if they have $6, they're going to spend all $6 because why not? <laughs> what, what's, what use is change going to be? So uh, we have a list of prices and we need to find a combination such that two items sum together to give us six. And yeah, uh, using one base indexing, we need to return the two indexes. So index one and four, uh, one base indexing, which would be one and five because the sum of them would give six and hence we fulfill the condition. So they also mentioned to us that uh yeah there will only be one unique solution so yeah uh, we need to complete this thing they'll be giving us an m and they'll give us an array of cost and then we need to return another array of the two indexes that we're interested in like one and four and we need to sort them in ascending order and also um first line it contains an integer, the number of trips to the parlor. Okay, okay. This doesn't matter to us because they've already done some level of pre-processing over here to read the data. Like this is just explanation of how the data is organized. So let's see what is the data format at first. So I'm going to just print, uh, sorry, M and ARR. Whoops, why am I struggling so much? <laughs> Anyways, that's about it. And I can just press run now. And I should see why am I not getting it? Yep. Okay. So I'm getting an M and an array of items that is unsorted. So a lot of, I think we might um, expect that sorting the array would be a useful method for us. But let's think about it first. Um, another method that you could apply is dictionaries. Like this doesn't apply to all questions, but in this case, they only expect us to choose two distinct items. Uh, they've limited us and that's a big help in a way. So how, do, how would I approach this question? So I'm going to first create a dictionary to store the index values, like the indexes of the items. So let's just say this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list. I'm going to go through the array. So for I in range uh, length ARR, I'm going to see if the sum, the, the, the difference exists somewhere. So if M minus ARRI in dictionary, I do something. If not, I add the item inside. So uh, that means the difference between them. So M minus M. So if it's $6 minus $1, which would be $5. If $5 exists in dictionary, I will return um, I'll return these two values. So since I know that the first, the item inside the dictionary should be the smaller one, I will do this and I will say dictionary, find the item that is M minus ARR I. And I plus one. The reason why I need to do I plus one is cause uh, this is index our zero base indexing, this thing, while I need it to be one base indexing. So yeah, um, for I in range then, okay. If the difference, that means, let's say I go to one, M minus ARR one is one. So M minus one is six minus one, which is five. Five exists in dictionary, nope. So I, 
add it to the dictionary. So dictionary, ARR, I, I add it to the dictionary and I add the index to the, I assign the index as the value to it. So now if I keep going through the whole thing, I have one and I've added that one is not, one is not inside the dictionary yet. So I'll add it inside. Next thing I'll go to three, three, six minus three is three, three is not inside yet. So I'll add it into the dictionary as two. I'll go to four, six minus four is two, two is not in the dictionary, I'll add it. Next I'll go to five and six minus five is one and one exists in position one. Hence, I will just return that specific position and the current position that I'm in. And we are done, if I'm not wrong. Hopefully, no errors. Okay, amazing. So, <clears throat> I pass all... Yep, I was waiting for the last one to pass. So, yeah, uh, that is ice cream parlor. This is by far the fastest method I can think of. Uh, if you know a faster method, do let me know. But the trick here is to... A lot of times when we are given an array and we think like there's some it's a some some dynamic programming kind of question, it doesn't have to be. It, like, it, we can think of other methods first before we get to that. So uh, a lot of solutions that I saw online, like I just wanted to see what the rest were doing. They ended up sorting this array, which is not that it's which is not even necessary because we are limited by two. They've only given us two. If they said like three to five items or something then maybe we a sorted array would help us. But since it's just two items, we, we can just check one item and check for the, uh, um, what is it, reciprocal? I don't know, that's not the right word. But if it is one, there's only one other item that could su successfully fulfill our criteria, which is five. So if we can just find out if there's been a five that we have seen earlier, we are good to go. And the fastest way to go through a, uh, a collection to, to see if it exists is a dictionary or a hash map hash table kind of arrangement and that's why we are using a dictionary so yeah that was my solution for ice cream parlor hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know if i could have improved it and do let me know if you like if there's something that i missed out or if you would like me to explain something better i'll see you guys in the next video and yep bye